Okay, so chloroform, we all know it as the liquid that sends you to sleep, but actually that's not really what it does. Or at least that's not what it is going to be used for in this video. Chloroform is a very useful solvent. It can dissolve all sorts of things. I mean, you can use chloroform to knock people out if you want. This is the part of the video where I say you shouldn't do this and it's bad and um, stain school. But the main thing I want to dissolve is caffeine. I want to extract the caffeine out of 10 kilos of coffee beans. I'll be doing the coffee beans in a future video just to see how much caffeine I can get out of it. That's going to take a lot of chloroform. So for this video, I just want to make as much chloroform as possible, hopefully up to a liter. And to do that, I'm going to need some sodium hypochlorite. So I've just bought myself almost 50 liters of concentrated bleach which contains a lot of sodium hypochlorite and the next ingredient we need is acetone which is really dangerous let me demonstrate warning i'm a self-proclaimed professional and i'm not liable for your actions oh. yeah so you don't want this happening inside of your lab let me, let me just let me just that was extremely chaotic. You want to see more chaos? Check this out. Warning, I'm a self-proclaimed professional and- It's not working. I think it's waterlogged. Don't age restrict the video, okay. YouTube. It was just water. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be making a huge amount of chloroform. So to make this, I've looked at some YouTube tutorials and it seems that they use just acetone and bleach. Instead, I've bought myself three times the strength of regular bleach at 125 grams per liter available. So the reason they're all in a freezer is because the reaction we're gonna do is very exothermic, which means it's gonna heat up a lot. And, oh my God, it's like 20 kilos. Apparently some YouTubers had issues with the version that was less concentrated. So having it three times more concentrated, let's hope it's not three times more, more hot or more heat. <laughs> We'll have to see. We'll have to do a little small scale test. I might as well just read the safety directions. Yeah, let's um, do Just that. so we know of, like what we're dealing with. Skin damage, skin damage, and dead fish. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's why I have, I have some airflow. <laughs> Not to be used for any purpose or in any manner contrary to this label unless authorized under appropriate legislation. I've watched a few tutorials online on just chemistry YouTubers who've made chloroform before. How to make chloroform. And this is the only person I've seen so far that's done it with a concentrated solution. Panic and evacuation. We're gonna have to hope that that doesn't happen today. We're just gonna have to do a small scale test first to make sure that this is actually going to work without, you know, chloroforming ourselves. Now let's have a look at this solution. Well, it's slightly yellow. Now I have an idea. What I think most people would do is use a big funnel like this because it's logical. But scrap that. Okay, so this is my idea. Wait, way. are you siphoning that? Like, are you... Like, I'm not going to use my mouth. Wait, so what's the plan? <laughs> I mean, I could try, <laughs> but I don't think it would go very well. No, no, no. So instead of using my mouth, I'm going to try to cap it like that. See? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Force the whole tube in. Just go down. Rotate it. Is this normally how your videos go? Yeah, this is like <laughs> half of my videos. Oh, totally, surely. <laughs> okay, fine, I think we should do it outside. I think you're right. We're just gonna go for it. Oh. <laughs> Stand back. <laughs> I reckon that's a perfect amount. Yeah. It's like 900, 900 milliliters. I'll just... Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm getting a thermometer. What temperature is this? Maybe negative three degrees Celsius, I think. It's not as cold as I would like. What is it supposed to be? I'd prefer negative 10. What? Is that gonna be an issue? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much acetone I'm supposed to add to this. 1.67 and divided by 3 acetone divided by 3 equals 0.5566. Get rid of that. <laughs> 41.45 milliliters of acetone. That sounds about right. So now we have our components ready. Okay. Okay, acetone's going in. You can see it's fogging up. This is called the haloform reaction, which I don't understand. Okay, for those wanting an actual explanation, we've got Prussian blue to tell us. 
Speaking of the color form reaction, let me explain it for you. Just a heads up, I'm going to do the explanation speedrun version because this reaction has honestly been beaten like a dead horse at this point. That's right. Extremely simplified, an acetyl group gets halogenated by a base. And because that base is there, the acetone gets attacked by the hypochlorite. And then a bunch of bullshit happens, and now we have this really cool carbon chloride free ion. And then the ion abstracts a proton from mm -hmm. the acetone, and now we have the sleepy juice. That's exactly what I was gonna say. It's already gone up like 4 degrees. I'm just gonna add this in slow additions. Okay, it's already very milky. That's that's the little droplets of chloroform forming in solution. They're so tiny that it just clouds the entire thing. And if you just let it settle out over some time, it should slowly settle down to the bottom and you can pick up your chloroform from the bottom. Yeah, it's almost 30 degrees now. Okay, chloroform boils at 62 degrees. So as long as this solution doesn't hit 60 degrees, we'll be okay. You meant to use a stir stick, but I just use thermometers. If the thermometer breaks, we get mercury at the bottom and <laughs> <laughs> that'll be interesting. Oh, look at this temperature. It's actually like moving real time. Do you see it? Yeah, look at that. Oh, it's like 55, 57. Oh, you can see chloroform. Yeah, so that's all chloroform pulling at the bottom. Does it smell like chloroform too? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think we just barely managed. So I'm gonna use this glass pipette to just take this out. I'm gonna put some in this beaker. It's a little cloudy, so it's not pure, but it's good enough. Should I give it a smell test? <laughs> I wanna sniff it. Is there another way to figure out how pure it is, or? No, nah, this is the only way. <laughs> okay, only way. Let's do it. <laughs> It kind of smells like antifreeze. You right. Know what it smells like? No. You get. <laughs> that was a strong one. Okay. <laughs> it's definitely chloroform, it is though. Chloroform, yeah. Definitely chloroform. Now it's just time to scale everything up and do the reaction inside of this jug. It's gonna be scary because we can't see how it's going. We're just gonna feel it warming up slowly. So we're starting off with the smallest of the containers and then we'll work our way up to the larger and more concentrated ones in the freezer. So this reaction is going to be almost 13 times larger than the reaction we just did in this beaker. That's 450 milliliters of acetone. Maybe we should add 200 mils first and then and then see what it does. We're just going to add it to the container, which feels really cursed. Oh shit, I can hear it foaming. Yeah. Yeah. The acetone's just floating on the surface, that's why. Yeah, I can smell the chloroform. Mmm, <laughs> lovely. It shouldn't produce any gas, so it should be fine to cap it. Just fucking mix it. Is that producing gas? Watch out for the... Yeah. <laughs> this is terrible. That is all chloroform, I don't like that. I don't want to open that, or I should open that outside. Here we go. Holy shit, it's just boiling all of it. You see that? There you go. Um, you don't need to worry about breathing in a little bit of chloroform because, like, if you're breathing it in from a rag, it actually takes quite a few minutes. It's way more than the movies suggest. Oh, it finally stopped. It really needs good mixing for this to work properly, I think, as I add my acetone. This is working better. It's not, it's not boiling out of control anymore. And uh, it should be okay now. We're like on the brink of this going wrong. Do you want to put this outside? I should, should we? Yeah. I reckon we should. All right. Cool. Ugh. Now we need to let the container sit for a while to allow the chloroform to separate from the water. So I've just put the chloroform containing mixture in the shade because if you have chloroform laying out open in the sun and it's in contact with air, it makes a chemical called phosgene. It's very slow, but it's a war chemical, so we don't want that. <laughs> so what I want to do now is just do the rest of our solutions, both at the same time, I figure why not. We'll assume that's a litre. So we need 750 milliliters of acetone. That's like half of what we need. This one might react worse. Okay, acetone going in. This is like 400 grams. I could probably just add half of it in. I could yeah. probably just dump it in. It's not too bad. So much acetone. Don't add acetone to other chemicals in your house because it can be so much worse than chloroform. Like? Uh, YouTube, please don't demonetize this video. I was just answering my friend, I swear. If you add acetone to hydrogen peroxide, it makes a explosive called TAP-P. It's a 
shock sensitive explosives. So. Just a little fact. Yeah, just a little, just a little fact there, telling people how to make explosives yeah. at home. I, that wasn't the intent. I am not liable for. So I just got a digital thermometer. I'll stick it in. You see, it rises. That's not too hot. That's okay. Okay. I don't think I can do both at once. Like, three, two, one. Okay, that's gonna be terrible. I'll use my thermometer and stir. Oh my god, it's coming out really fast. I can feel the heat. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Yeah, it's bubbling Aggress aggressively. Holy shit, I'm gonna turn off that fan. It's pouring out. You can, can you see it? Oh, Ooh. it's above the boiling point of chloroform right now. So it's all just coming out. Oh. You can smell it? Okay, sorry, I'll no, sorry. keep the fan here. We, we're not meant to chloroform ourselves. Yeah. That wasn't the goal. That'd be a good video. <laughs> it wouldn't be much of a video because we dropped to the floor. Oh, shit. I can see the vapor. Yeah? That's crazy. You can see it is getting sucked out though. It is working. Thing. Yeah. It's still 64. Uh, no. The boiling isn't water boiling, it is just chloroform because water doesn't boil at 64 degrees um, chloroform does or at least a little lower than that our product is escaping which isn't great so we'll get a low yield <laughs> you see my gloves are coming off <laughs> oh no and they're melting onto the glass this one's only 47 that's nothing yeah chuck it all in <laughs> yeah it doesn't matter i'll just put it all in we're okay that's it. We use almost all of the acetone too. I don't know why the bigger one was fine. Unless you got your calculations wrong. <laughs> yeah, my calculations are probably very wrong. <laughs> now we needed to let these containers cool down and in the meantime, we wanted to find out why the blue one didn't work. So this is what happened to the last one. We added a bit too much acetone too quickly. So it starts reacting. Holy shit. Okay, all these bubbles are, I assume to be just chloroform straight up. So the reaction happens really quickly. That's why you gotta keep it cold. This one is not cold. This one's been warmed in the sun for a bit. Got a good whiff of that one. <laughs> <laughs> it is also possible that the acetone is boiling off too. <laughs> Dude. I think it is just acetone boiling. Most of, well, uh, there's a lot of chloroform too. I wanna see if it's flammable. Oop, yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's mostly acetone burning off then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's possible the glass could just explode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My so touch. we could put like cold water in it. So My, yeah. yeah, put a cold water in it and see. <laughs> okay, now that we've messed around, it was time to check if the first container's chloroform had finished separating or not. I'm not really sure where to tip the liquid into. Drain. Oh, it's not really. <laughs> <laughs> environmentally friendly idea. You should do. So the chloroform should be mostly on the bottom now. So I'll just pour off the water from the top layer. Any moment now there should be chloroform coming through. I wanna get every drop. Whoa. See oh, that? I see that, that's a good view. Yeah. See the go. layer? Yeah, so that's the chloroform there and then that's the water layer above it. We just need to separate the two. I'm just pouring off the water layer. So what's mostly left is chloroform. We then brought this inside to fully extract the chloroform. It's been like a good 20 minutes and this blue one's still bubbling. So what I'm doing is setting up a retort stand. I'm just gonna add everything to this. You can see the different layers here much clearer now. See that? That's so much better. Now we have pure chloroform coming out. And cut off the water. And so this is all chloroform. It's a little cloudy because it has some water content in it. It's like exactly 100 milliliters. So we just need to do this 10 more times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my friend just went home, but I just realized I just didn't pull the rest out. So we actually have a lot more chloroform. Swap that out for another beaker. 
This is around 240 milliliters of chloroform. This means so far with the first container, which was 11.6 liters after we transferred some of it out, we have achieved a yield of 46.1%. There's still two other containers we need to extract the chloroform from though, so I'm curious if the larger scale ones get a better yield. I transferred all the wastewater from the largest 20 liter white container into this big pond bucket thing, and the liquid was oddly yellowish for some reason. We probably just didn't add enough acetone. Check out this separation right here. Yeah, it looks like a lot of chloroform down there. I'm kind of excited. Next, I emptied yeah, the 15 liter blue one that boiled most of the chloroform away. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And the result was rather shocking. That's zero, that is zero chloroform. Oh no. That's like 300 or more milliliters of chloroform that's just boiled off and just escaped into the atmosphere. There's like a few tiny little droplets of chloroform at the bottom. That is sad. This means we got less than 1% yield for the 15 liter container. I'm not really sure why this one was so oh, much worse shit. than the others. But anyway, we still need to find out the 20 liter white container's yield. I used the separatory funnel again to extract all the chloroform like last time, and this time it clearly made a lot more chloroform than the other attempts. Whoa, this is so much chloroform, that's so cool. After some calculations, I estimate to have gotten around 470 milliliters of chloroform from this container, which is a yield of 54.2%. However, with with everything combined, this didn't fill up to the one liter I was hoping for. Damn it. That's so close though. 700 milliliters of chloroform. So I had to buy another one of these containers. I decided to go with the same container that didn't work last time. Now this time, let's get it even colder. I cooled it down in my freezer 10 degrees lower than my other attempt to negative 13 degrees Celsius. After adding the acetone, it actually touched the boiling point of chloroform, literally at the boiling point of chloroform, but it wasn't really bubbling like last time. This one might be my best yield yet. I poured off the wastewater again, separated the chloroform in my separatory funnel and weighed out the final result. This gave 677 grams, or a yield of 67.5%. That's a bit higher than most I've seen online. Now finally, I have over a litre of chloroform. However, this isn't technically pure yet, so I spent some time distilling the chloroform over, discarding the initial cloudy solution, and keeping the rest of what dripped over. Anyway, that's my one litre of chloroform all cleaned out. It's got a bit of water in it, but I don't really care about that. It's still way cleaner than it was before. I know this is definitely cleaner because the leftover is a bit yellow. I just hope this is enough chloroform to extract the caffeine out of the 10 kilos of coffee beans I'll be doing in a future video. Remember to push the notification bell and subscribe to see when I upload it. And as always, thanks to my patrons for always supporting me and paying my bills. If you want your name shown at the end of my videos and other perks, follow the link in the description. With all that said, have a good day.